In the late afternoon of December 4th, 1980, an unmarked grave was found in a field in El Salvador. When it was opened in the presence of the U.S. ambassador, it revealed the bodies of four women. Mary Knoll sisters Maura Clark and Eda Ford, Ursuline's sister Dorothy Kazel, and lay missionary Jean Donovan. Of the five officers later found responsible for the rape and murder of these women, three were graduates of the United States Army School of the Americas. The School of the Americas originated in 1946 in Panama. Now it is located on the grounds of Fort Benning, Georgia. The school teaches commando operations, sniper training, how to fire an M16, and psychological warfare. Since no major declared war between Latin American countries has occurred in decades, and the communist threat has vanished, why provide this kind of training? Representative Joseph Kennedy. If you look at the course ranges that uh, are offered to uh, these uh, uh, individuals, they in fact are a, a dedicated way of uh, teaching uh, military leaders in foreign nations how to subvert uh, their local communities. Since it opened, over 55,000 military officials from 23 Latin American and Caribbean countries have trained at the school, about 2,000 students a year. As facts have emerged about the school and its graduates, it has drawn the attention of a growing number of human rights activists, such as Mary Knoll father Roy Bourgeois. Just down the road here is this school, the School of the Americas. It's a combat school. Most of the courses come around, revolve around what they call counterinsurgency warfare. Who are the insurgents? We have to ask that question. They are the poor. They are the people in Latin America who call for reform. They are the landless peasants who are hungry. They are health care workers, human rights advocates, labor organizers. They become the insurgents. They are seen as el enemigo, the enemy. And they are those who become the targets of those who learn their lessons at the School of the Americas. What has been learned about the lessons taught at the school? In the 1980s, the Civil War in El Salvador became a focal point for human rights activists throughout the world. Death squads operated freely, often killing 50 people a night. There were so many cases that on March 23, 1980, Archbishop Oscar Romero in San Salvador made a plea to the military leaders of his country. I would like to make an appeal in a special way to the men of the army. In the name of God, in the name of the suffering people whose laments rise to the heaven each day more tumultuous, I beg you, I ask you, I order you, in the name of God, stop the repression. While celebrating Mass the next day, Archbishop Romero was assassinated. A number of years later, the National Security Archives in Washington, D.C. made an important discovery when they obtained a copy of a declassified cable. Kate Doyle. These two cables are both from the American Embassy in El Salvador. One is from Dean Hinton, who was then ambassador to El Salvador in 1981. And it discusses a meeting during which Roberto Dobuisson plans the murder of Archbishop Romero. During the meeting, there is described a lottery that the people who are attending the meeting hold to see who would draw the right to kill Romero himself. Dobison was trained at the School of the Americas. Also trained at the school were two of the three officers directly responsible for the assassination. December 11th, 1981. El Mazote, a small village in El Salvador. Primero llegaron y dijeron que todos salieran a la calle. 
First, they forced everyone out of their houses and made us all lie face down in the street, both men and women. There were soldiers on both sides. Then they moved away to see the women kneeling down on the ground to pray. They killed all of them. Not a single one of them survived. Just me, by the grace of God. I hid under a tree. When I heard the screams of the children, and I knew which ones were mine, they were crying. Mommy, they're killing us. Over 900 men, women, and children were massacred. Virtually the entire population of the village and the area surrounding El Mozote. Out of 143 bodies identified in the laboratory, 131 were of children under the age of 12, including three infants under the age of three months. Ten of the 12 officers cited as responsible for the El Mazote massacre were graduates of the School of the Americas. They were members of the Atlacatl Battalion, a part of the El Salvador Army. November 16, 1989. San Salvador. Six Jesuit priests, their housekeeper, and her 15-year-old daughter were slaughtered. To get the facts about this incident, a U.S. congressional investigation began, led by Representative Joseph Mokley. I went down, talked with the embassy, talked with the military, talked with the unionists. The killing was done by the Atlacatel Battalion, which is the crack battalion in, in that country. And these are the people, some of them had just returned from the United States where they were taught a course on human rights, amongst other things. 19 of the 26 officers implicated in the Jesuit murders were graduates of the school. The United Nations Truth Commission report, released on March 15, 1993, cited specific officers for committing atrocities during the El Salvador Civil War. At School of the Americas Watch, just outside Fort Benning, Georgia, Vicki Immerman matched the names cited in the UN report with names in a United States government document. What I did was I took these officers, all the officers listed in the report, and I took their names and looked them up in this list of graduates of the School of the Americas, which we received through the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, what I found were 49 of the 60-some 60, 60 officers listed. Uh, were graduates of the School of the Americas. El Salvador is only part of the school's story. In the entry area of one of its main buildings are photographs of those the school honors, its so-called Hall of Fame. At the top of the list, Hugo Bonzer, former dictator of Bolivia, a graduate of the school. Some of the others similarly honored are the former dictators of Honduras, Ecuador, and Argentina. And generals from eight other Latin and Caribbean nations, many cited by human rights groups for involvement in human rights abuses in their own countries. Among other graduates, Manuel Noriega, former president of Panama, currently in prison in the United States. Four of the five ranking Honduran officers who organized death squads in the 1980s as part of Battalion 316 are graduates. Half of the 250 Colombian officers cited for human rights abuses attended the school. The three highest ranking Peruvian officers convicted in February 1994 of murdering nine university students and a professor were all graduates. During the dictatorship of the Somoza family, over 4,000 National Guard troops graduated from the school. Many of them later became known as the Contras, responsible for the deaths of thousands of Nicaraguan peasants in the 1980s. The general in charge of Argentina's so-called dirty war was a school graduate. During that internal conflict in the late 1970s and early 1980s, an estimated 30,000 people were tortured, disappeared, and murdered.
General Hector Gramajo of Guatemala was the featured speaker at the school's graduation ceremonies in 1991. Human rights groups claim he is the architect of strategies that legalized military atrocities in Guatemala, resulting in the death of over 200,000 men, women, and children. As a Catholic priest, as a, as a U.S. citizen, I really feel a responsibility to speak out against that because of this. This does not lead to healing. It leads to death and suffering. In a way, this is a, a death machine. And this, I want to say, is very close to home because it's in our backyard. It's not out there in El Salvador. This is not in South Africa. We're talking about a school of assassins right here in our backyard being supported and financed through our tax money. It's being done in our name. An amendment offered On September 30th, 1993, the School of the Americas was debated by Congress for the first time in its history. It happened when an amendment to the Defense Department budget was introduced by Congressman Joseph Kennedy. Mr. Speaker, my amendment would reduce the Army uh, Operation and Maintenance account by $2.9 million, the amount dedicated to running the Army School of the Americas at Fort Benning, Georgia. The intent of this amendment is to close the school. We're only uh, 30 or 40 votes short of, of winning. Uh, that means that uh, if people around the country hear about this and write their congressman, we can win. This is an issue that we can win on. And what's very important right now, I feel, is to let our voices be heard. Bishop Romero said it best, before he was killed, before he was assassinated by, by someone who trained at the School of the Americas, he said, we who have a voice, we have to speak for the voiceless. And I'm re I realize that we here in this country, we have a voice. We can speak without having to worry about uh, being disappeared or tortured or being picked up. We can speak. And I just hope that we can speak clearly and boldly on this issue.